I'm very excited because in this How Do I video I will show you how do I design wizards for HTML clients in Microsoft Dynamics and AV. In this video you will see how to develop a wizard page for HTML clients. In general, we always advise that you design wizards which are simple, although Dynamics and AV does allow you to design some fairly complex wizards. In this example, we will keep things simple. Let's imagine that you want a user to send a sales quote. For that sales quote document to be useful, it should contain their company name and email address. Let's create a wizard to guide the user through specifying their company name and email address using these five steps. In the first step, we'll create a new page. Then we'll add some steps. Next, we'll add navigation to our page. We'll also include an image header. And then we will test these steps and the wizard for all devices. Let's get started with the first step. And in this first step, we will create a page that will host the wizard. We'll do that using our development environment. And in the development environment, we will create a new page of type navigation page. Let's see how that works. In my development environment, I create a new page. Let's use the wizard. I will use my company information table as the source for my page. And next, I will select the navigation page as the option to use. I will click on the OK button and the page will be uh, created. You can have some uh, fast steps on here. I will not do that. So what I would like to start with in this case is an empty page. And in the properties, we'll use navigation uh, page. The navigation page has been around for a long time. It's highly flexible and can be used to create wizards having sequential steps or even wizards where there is no particular sequence of steps. In this demonstration, we will focus only on designing a navigate page for sequential steps. Now we need to define the individual steps in the wizard. Each step is represented by a group in the page designer window. We'll then add also some content to these groups. In our page, I will start by adding three groups on the same level. The first group is named step one, and then step two and step three. What you notice is that in the visible property, I will use an expression, a boolean, uh, to determine when each step needs to be visible. Now that I have defined the steps, I will add the subgroup in step one, which I will name company name. Then I'll also provide instructional text multilanguage. For example, this is the name of the company. And in that subgroup, I will add my field name, which comes from the company table. I will similarly create subgroups in the other steps, one which contains the email address and another one uh, which contains all done. Uh, this does not need to contain any field. It will be the last step in my wizard. Now we need to define how the user will navigate through these steps. Navigation is done using actions and these actions will be visible on the page and will allow the user to navigate between the different tabs. Let's see how that works in development. In the page actions, which you can open in view actions, I will add three actions, back, next and finish. In the property of the actions, I will set the in footer bar to true. And this property is unique to navigate pages because it allows the action to appear in the appropriate part of the screen where the user can click or tap and navigate. The enabled property will also be set to an expression and the image property of my three actions will also be set. For example, for the back action, I will use previous records. For the next action, I will use next record. And for the last action, I will use approve images. Dynamics NAV looks to the image property to understand which actions must be given special importance and displayed accordingly in different clients. Now that we have defined our navigational records, what we will now do is add some logic to tie it all together. In the code of my page, in the unopened page trigger, we set the starting value for each step. I'm using an option field and my option field has a number of uh, options, uh, of course. Let's have a look here in my globals. This step option has three options, start, second, finish. So I will give it an initial value of start and then I will use an enable controls function 
and that enable controls will load the reset controls function. Let's have a look there in the reset controls. And here you notice that the actions and steps are initialized. If I go back after the reset controls function, depending on the value of my option field, I will then show the start step, show the second step, or show the final step, which are also functions and which I have defined that determine which actions uh, need to be visible. All of that starts, as you notice, from the on open page. Next, on each action, I will add code to navigate across steps. Uh, as you notice here in the on action trigger of the back, I'm doing next step true. On the on action trigger of next, I'm doing next step false. And this next step function uh, will determine what needs to happen depending if you click on back or next. I have a code construct in here and then you can add some custom code. And then at the end, uh, you can increase or decrease the option value of your steps. And I do that in my three steps. And, uh, on the finish one, I'm using the finish action function. And in this finish action function, you close the page. And before that, you can also add some custom code. To make the page more attractive or show some visual guidance to help the user through the steps, we can add image headers through the wizard. Image headers on wizards are left aligned and have a gray background. Let's see how to develop that. So in my page, I add two groups, uh, one in which I use to show a standard image, another one to show the DOM image. And as you notice, uh, if you have a look here at the group itself, I'm using a visible property, top banner visible and not final step visible. And for the other group, I will use an expression top banner visible and final step visible. For the image fields themselves, I'm using here the media repository. Uh, and I will show that in the code how that works. What is also important is to leave the show caption blank for these images. So if you have a look here in uh, the codes or actually in my variables, you notice that I am using a table media repository. Uh, I'm using the table two times. And then in my code, I will determine to load which image by using the load top banners. Let's have a look in there. And as you notice here uh, in this table, I'm fetching certain images, which I'm formatting according to the current client type. So these images will depend on which kind of client is running. And then I'm also determining if the top banner should be visible, yes or no. So that's how I can add these images on top of the header of my page. We are all set now. Let's give it a spin on the web client to see how it behaves. And we'll not only use the web client, but also the tablet and phone experience, which you can simulate using these URLs. Let's have a look. Here I am in the application and to run my page, I created an action. If you click on the action, you see the wizard page appearing. I see the name of my company. I can click on the next button. I can see the email address appearing. You can also see the top banner image for my first and second step. And if I go to the last step, you notice the buttons uh, change and we also have our final image in here. Here in my tablet experience, I can also go to the menu, scroll down. There I will launch my wizard and now I can test how it looks and feels and behaves in the tablet clients. Then I resize my browser. I use the phone extension to launch the phone clients. And in my phone client, I will also see the wizard here in the menu. I can launch it and then you can see how it behaves in the phone uh, clients. Let's summarize these steps. In the first step, we created a new page navigate page. Then we added steps as subgroups. Next, we foresaw navigation buttons. Then we used an image header and we tested our navigate page for all clients. In this video, we covered the basics of navigate page and some tips to get the best experience on all devices. We created a step-by-step -step wizard and saw that working on all HTML clients. To learn more, please visit the following resources. Thanks for following this short video to explain how to design wizards for HTML clients in Dynamics NAV. This video in the How Do I series for Dynamics NAV is brought to you by Microsoft and Platan. See you in the next one.